Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, okay, this is going to be the start of book three of Jean-Jacques Rousseau's The Social Contract. Uh, and so we'll start with book three, chapter one, Government in General. And so here's where he really starts breaking down the the more nitty-gritty of what uh, the institution should look like, what the sort of rules should be, what the separations of power should be, um, and then some really weird, like, political theories that we'll talk about. But, okay. Uh, chapter one, government in general. Uh, he says that all free actions are made up of two components, right? One, the moral, uh, which is the will. Um, this is to be analogized as the legislative body, right? And can only belong to the people. And then we also have the physical uh, part of a free action. And this is the body, right? This is the executive power, um, and it cannot be the people, and it cannot be the legislator either. This is only a branch made to carry out the will of the people. And so we have this breakdown between uh, the moral or the will, right? Um, the, the act of consciousness and the act of uh, ideating. And then we have the physical, right? The body or the executive branch, which carries out the ideations, right? Okay. Um, it, it, it's pretty cool. It's a, a, a separation of powers. Um, for the most part throughout history, it has always just been the king um, or the pope or whatever it is, right? And so he's saying, no, that's, that's unacceptable and illegitimate and immoral. And then he goes on to define government. Uh, quote, what then is government? An intermediate body set up between the subjects and the sovereign to secure their mutual correspondence, charged with the execution of the laws and the maintenance of liberty, both civil and political. So the government is this intermediary between the sovereignty, this concept of sovereignty, and the people um, and they, they uh, react together, basically. He also says, no matter whether you're a prince or a king or whatever, you can be deposed. Quote, by which a people puts itself under a prince is not a contract, are certainly right. It is simply and solely a commission, an employment, in which the rulers, mere officials of the sovereign, right? You are not the sovereign yourself. That is just a concept. Uh, exercise in their own name the power of which makes them depositaries. This power it can limit, modify, or recover at its pleasure. For the alienation of such a right is incompatible with the nature of the social body and contrary to the end of association. So even if you are a king, you only serve at the pleasure of the sovereign. You are just a dignitary, a minister, an ambassador, whatever it is, but you are not the sovereignty itself. You work for the people. Uh, then he goes on and says that, this is where it kind of starts to get weird, but uh, he says, larger states inevitably lead to less power for each individual citizen. Uh, quote, now the re less relation the particular wills have to the general will, that is morals and manners to law, the more should the repressive force be increased. The government then to be good should be proportionately stronger as the people is more numerous. So he's saying it's sort of an inevitable problem that the bigger your population gets, uh, the larger your, um, I guess, police state must be. Um, and so we have to find a happy middle ground. Uh, and then he goes on and says the executive must be restrained. Uh, thus, the dominant will of the prince, or should be, nothing but the general will or the law. His force is only the public force concentrated in his hands, and as soon as he tries to base any absolute and independent act on his own authority, the tie that binds the whole together begins to be loosened. So, again, if the president, or the king, or the pope, or whatever it is, um, starts to act in particular ways to help either himself or cronies or a small group of citizens rather than the collective will, uh, he is no longer the legitimate um, holder of the sovereign will. 
He then goes on to say, it is remarkably difficult to give power to assemblies and councils, uh, sort of the bureaucratic arm of running a state um, that is inevitable and yet keep their interest beholden to the state and not their own power. So um, it's really hard. One of the problems with a modern state, right, that, uh, that Max Weber talks about um, later on is is uh, just the bureaucracy that is inevitably necessary to run a state, to keep documents, to track citizens, to police, to... I mean, there's all kinds of different functions of the modern state, right? And the difficulty is to keep them focused on the people rather than on empowering the state itself, is what he's saying. Uh, quote, the difficulties lie in the manner of so ordering this subordinate whole within the whole that in no way alters the general constitution by affirmation of its own and always distinguishes the particular force it possesses, which is destined to aid in its preservation from the public force, which is destined to the preservation of the state. And in a word is always ready to sacrifice the government to the people and never to sacrifice the people to the government. Right. So it's it's a really friendly way or a really uh, flighty way of saying uh, it's hard to keep bureaucrats beholden to the people and not to themselves and, and the, you know, the apparatus of the state. OK, chapter two, the constituent principle in the various forms of government. So Rousseau states that more members of the government invariably make the state weaker, right? Because um, you're sort of um, distributing the power and that's going to inevitably weaken the power. Uh, each member of the, quote, magistracy, right? This is what we'll call the bureaucracy, uh, has three different incentive structures. One, they can be self-absorbed, right? And ideally, this will be at a zero. Uh, two, uh, we can have the will of the magistrates as a collective um, this should be small. He doesn't really put a percentage on it. And then three, uh, we should have the will of the state, which is sort of the will of the people. And this should make up the most um, of sort of where we, the, the direction we go with our laws. Uh, and Rousseau says that this is sort of the exact opposite of reality. Um, and he explains that it's a lot easier for a single individual to focus on the collective will. Uh, as the bureaucracy spreads and power spreads, the individual's incentives come to dominate the will. So he's saying actually don't have too many people in charge. We don't need a dictator, but we also don't need this incredibly widespread system um, because that sort of removes the incentive to focus on the common good. Uh, let's see. Uh, too, he also argues that too many stakeholders makes the state slow to react. Um, and that's sort of a modern argument today, right, that um, is coming from China and Russia and other authoritarian states that democracy simply can't keep up with the, the pace of the modern world, um, that we're all sort of broken down um, by discord in our democratic societies. And so we can't focus on the future. Uh, or infrastructure, and everything is focused on the now. Um, anyway, so that's a that's a very very uh, modern debate in world politics. Is is um, when you're talking about the functioning of a state, is a democracy uh, less capable to to act than um, than uh, a dictatorship? Okay, he says, quote. Moreover, it is a certainty that promptitude in execution diminishes as more people are put in charge of it. Where prudence is made too much of, not enough is made of fortune, opportunity is let slip, and deliberation results in the loss of its object. Okay, chapter three, the division of governments. We'll do one more. Uh, he says there's three forms of government, democracy, aristocracy, and monarchy. Uh, and then he calls democracy giving the quote unquote magistracy, right, or the, the law or the administration of the state, whatever, to the entire body of the people, right? Um, and he'll later claim that that's impossible. Like, we can't have that in reality. Then we have the aristocracy, which is more private citizens than magistrates. Um, and then we have monarchies where we have a single magistrate. And he would claim that, you know, America is a, an aristocracy. Um, just under his definitions, right? Okay, quote, 
There has been at all times much dispute concerning the best form of government without consideration of the fact that each is in some cases the best and in other cases the worst. Uh, and then he makes these weird distinctions, right? He says that small states should be democratic, middling sized states should be aristocracies, and very large states should be monarchies. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll call it there and we'll get into why he says those in a minute. Thanks again for being here. Bye.